Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And if you enjoy wild stories about the stock market and scintillating details about crazy value investing things going awry that are destroying the entire market, then you're going to enjoy this video. It's a little bit about the back history of Michael Burry and deep value and GameStop stock. We're going to talk about the modern events now at the end, too. Get <laughs> All right. Our main man, Michael Burry here. Do you remember him being involved in GameStop back uh, a couple years ago? I remember he sold too early, like by like a quarter. Like he was close. Like he made money. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I sold too early for uh, to make maximum profits. Yeah, yes. absolutely. But, uh, you know, was he trading his plan? Probably what he wanted to do anyway. Yeah. Did he make money? Absolutely. So he was involved in the first kind of wave here of like the whole GameStop saga. Um, and, you know, if, if you really follow his portfolio quarter to quarter like we do, you see that he trades in and out of things a lot. So it's very frequent to, you know, move or even, you know, may buy and sell the same exact ticker multiple times, may trade options on it as well. He, he's kind of a very active trader for a value investor. And if you watch the early days of like the, the deep value of Roaring Kitty, you know, kind of podcast series where he talks about how he analyzes companies, he did talk about how when he looked at, you know, kind of super investors, Burry was one of the people that he aligned most with in terms of the stocks that they, they chose to invest in. Um, now, the underlying thesis can be a little bit different between the two of them, whereas, you know, uh, Keith Gill or Roaring Kitty here is looking more at the this, this short squeeze data. Um, you, you see that Burry... I find it hard to believe that he would be trading on based upon that. In fact, like I said, he sold before that even took place. Um, he was more looking at it as like a deep value play, right? Where it was like undervalued and that there's something the management could do about it. So you almost took like a an activist investor role in the, in the stock. Right. All right. So, you know, this is a little like brief history from our article here where they're talking about after the big short that he got famous for, you know, movie there on the 2008 financial crisis. Um, kept a low profile, but he did have the, this this kind of investment arm here. This is when we tracked the SIA and asset management, uh, a little family office. But he did have a portfolio position in GameStop worth $7 million in 2018, but closed it the next quarter, all right, in 2019. Then he reinvested, this closing 3 million shares worth 17 million, all right? And then he starts writing the board of directors letters. <laughs> I think he wrote like three letters in total, um, asking them to buy back another $230 million stock to complete the $300 million in repurchase that they had already authorized. So he's asking them just to fill the promise that they had made in terms of, you know, a share repurchases, all right? And that in, at the time, investors had suffered catastrophic losses for their faith and patience. That's, that's quite uh, strong verbiage there for an you know, activist investor role, don't you think? Well, true. They're the blockbuster of video games. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the stock chart is coming up here. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, he's, he's not wrong throughout that entire time period. That, that 2018, 2019, down into 2020, uh, there was quite a significant downward pressure on the stock, uh, despite the fact that management had a significant portion of shares that to be repurchased authorized, um, and they were not even using that. And, you know, it's, it's funny as people that love to see share repurchases and people that like, like to hunt companies that have a lot of cash in the balance sheet, it's wild to see how often they're unwilling to buy back shares when they're, say, they're, they're meta and their shares are 80, as opposed to when they're at 400. <laughs> right. And yeah. I will say this chart is if you remember this, it went into the 400s range. It, it's because they did so many share offerings screwing over people to get as much cash as possible. So that's why it says that it has like a max of like 90-ish here. That's not, yeah. at the time, that was not true. They're not done yet either with those. I know that's kind of comes at the end of this thing. Um, so this was part of the, the Roaring Kitty thought process here is, is the short float. You know, yeah. How much of the shares are sold short into the market? I'm not going to get into short selling or dark pools or any of that sort of crap because, frankly, to me, they're like fairy tales and ghost stories. I don't know how much like of truth there is to them. Maybe a little bit, but they're not not something we can concrete like lay our eyes upon. Um, but you have seen a little uptick here in the short float recently. All right, so I guess that's notable. Still not quite to the mania of early 2021, though, right? The the problem i'm gonna to wait to say this at the end but okay yeah. so his reemergence in this most recent kind of scenario here that the, the episode that's played out here was this the simple meme here of a gamer sitting forward in his chair getting a little bit more into the game right he's getting a little bit a little bit more into the game he bit. didn't make this meme right because i've seen this a bunch so. yeah yeah but look at how many views this meme got yeah <laughs> eight million views all right bananas that's gross 
he also then started posting recently back on Reddit, uh, which is where a lot of this kind of uh, fervor came from. Um, so this one right here from three years ago, this is where he had stopped posting, took like a three-year hiatus from GameStop. At the time, he had $34.4 million, $34 million in portfolio, um, $31 million of which was in GameStop stock. Right? Then all of a sudden, he starts reemerging here. Right? We got June 2nd, June 3rd, and then June 6th, a sequential order. Um, he now has 210 million as of the first time he posted a portfolio screenshot in this most recent episode, um, of which a 115 million is stock and 65 million is in some short term options. All right, June 22nd, 2024. All right, like you're looking at like two weeks from now, not even $20 calls. So in the money, but not by a lot at the time. This was when GME was about $25 a, sh a share. Um, yeah, $23 a share actually. Then he posts another one uh, the next day, June 3rd. At, in that single day, he had about $78 million in gains. <laughs> Total portfolio sitting at 289 right? Okay. And then now, finally, this is the most recent one. We, we had him post where it was an individual screenshot. He didn't, you know, it was a couple of days ago. Uh, but he had $586 million to total portfolio value. He had $250 million in gains in that single day. Right? <laughs> Now, yeah. there was a huge decline yesterday, like a massive, yeah. massive, massive decline. So I'm going to say he's not so there anymore. He did not post a screenshot yesterday, but he did do this live stream. So he scheduled a live stream in advance for like noon yesterday, I want to say it was. And he had over 600,000 people in his live stream. Absolutely enormous uh, for, for people on a YouTube live stream midday on a, on a weekday, which is just yeah. crazy. That's disgusting. Um, and he did pull up the screenshot during the actual live stream and he was down $235 million intraday as of that time. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that hurts. And I, I don't, did you watch it at all or? No. No. So you, you see he's wearing band-aids and he came out with a sling. That's pretty funny. All right. I mean, at least he's got a sense of humor. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, battered and bruised uh, was basically like his message there. But the funny part to me was when asked kind of what his opinion of the company was now and what, like what exactly his plan was with the stock. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it, it came down to his faith in this guy, Ryan Cohen. Okay. This is the guy doesn't even the table properly. I mean, look at him. He's sitting on top of the thing. I just, the, okay. All right. So, okay, hold yep. on. We'll just real quick. I'm sorry. The, the business model of GameStop, if, before it made sense when he was going long because it had, I believe it had over a hundred percent float, which should be impossible. But there is a lot yeah. of institutional investors that were leveraged shorting it. Right? That's not the same yeah. case right now. R right now, you have a company who essentially it's. I know that there's a lot of people like GameStop. I don't get it. They completely rip you off on used games. Like everything's way more expensive there. There's yeah. Steam that just runs sales of games. Everything's digital. It's great. You just get on Amazon. Or you can just go on Craigslist and find news games. They completely rip you off. I don't understand all the games ups might be closed. I don't understand how this is going to be a thing. Like how he actually believes in the business. From the short aspect, I get it. Yeah. But the business I, aspect, this is less than 10 years alive from now. Yeah. I Well, the short squeeze makes sense. But his, his business premise is that Ryan Cohen is going to figure out something new for, you know, GameStop to be. I'm like, no. yeah, maybe, but like that, can you imagine having half a billion dollars in like hopes and wishes that that's effectively what it's come down to at this point? I mean, I mean, I get it. He, he does have a lot of money, but I just, it, this time around is different because the more people that go long, they're going to be cannibalizing each other. I'm going to explain that at the end. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so, you know, th this is a news story from back before, but they asked him like, what is exit strategy? He says, seriously, what is your exit strategy? He says, what's an exit strategy? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. So this is from a couple of years ago. So like, I, I don't know what his like long-term plan is here. Basically he just reiterated his old points about, I like the stock and to the point of being almost like an abused spouse here, uh, GameStop went ahead and released their earnings early. They were supposed to come out Tuesday after the bell. They released them Friday in mm -hmm. order to get a, ahead of this wave. And they showed that their sales were down 29% year over year in revenue. Um, and that they had actually had a loss on an earning per share basis on, on like a net, net loss basis. I think they were positive free cash flow. Um, 
but they also announced that they were going to do another dilution, which they had just done one. Um, they had issued 45 million shares in May and they collected $900 million in, in proceeds from that. They have, I think, just under a billion dollars in, in cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet as of right now. That's it? Um, they only have a yeah. billion dollars in cash flow? The amount of well, money they raised in 2020 <laughs> alone, they only have a billion dollars? They I mean, did multiple share is, offerings. In, billion i thought i have to go back and double check what their market cap is their market cap was only like eight billion (laughs) i don't care they did so many share offerings yeah well this is how many shares outstanding they have 305 million uh they uh filed to proceed with a sale of 75 million more shares so like like a 30 percent dilution yeah okay so all right here's here's where i'm coming from one I think an abuse spouse is, is, a, is an apt analogy here, right? Because GameStop is benefiting, and just like AMC, horrible. They're just offering shares. Be like, yeah, you go, Ape, yeah. Ape Squad. Share, sell as many as you can. Sell as many shares as we can right now. Oh, keep on going, guys. You're going to do great. Absolutely horrible, okay? Second, the you had a large pool of very greedy, very greedy people in 2020 that were shorting the shit out of this, right? Uh And because of that, you had this crazy, awesome squad of Redditors who just rose up, everyone bought, and it forced all of these people to have to buy back and have to buy back at higher and higher prices, thus making this go higher and higher and higher in share price. We're not even close to the short interest of last time. So now when you have all these people who don't understand that, who are like, oh my God, this is going to 400 bucks again. Oh shit. All right. I'm going to throw all my money back in. Bad idea. Because all that's going to happen is you now have a little bit of people shorting. Okay. Even if they cover, this is just going to cannibalize each other. The more and more people that go in, you're not taking money from institutional like Citadel. You're not doing that. You're taking money from Joe. Like it, it's not the same thing this is not going to go well your average redditor was in a different financial position back in 2022 right we had come down from we were in the lockdowns savings rates had spiked you know we had all that money raining down from the federal government inflation hadn't yet really like taken off to the point of like hurting our purchasing power and our grocery budgets hadn't gone through the roof um so like the army of redditors was healthier from a financial standpoint too to take that like fight to like these, these hedge funds at the time um, whereas now you don't really have that enemy you're saying, and I would say, argue that people are in a kind of a worse financial position to be going like all in on a YOLO here, right? It's, <laughs> this just seems like such a bad idea. Also to, to, to pick, I guess AMC is a little bit worse and then share, share yeah. offering thing. AMC is worse to be clear. Yeah. They're real assholes, but Ryan Cohen, uh, you know, definitely way better than the Adam Aaron guy. I can't stand him. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Well, let us know what you guys think. I hope if anyone's going in, I hope you make money. Obviously, I don't want anyone to lose money. I, I won't go in. I I bought like four shares at fifty and sold at thirty. It's like I lost eighty bucks. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All, All right, right guys. guys. So let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts.